After what seemed like months of endless rumors, leaks, and even official teasers from OnePlus, we finally have the brand new OnePlus 10T that was unveiled this week here in New York City. A flagship tier device that costs a lot less than what the competition is charging for their devices. Now, there's reasons for that. There's compromises that were made. But if you're looking for a device that has ultimate performance without breaking the bank, this might just be the device for you. There's a lot to talk about with the 10T and how it compares to the 10 Pro and a lot of the competition as well. But I think the most important thing about this phone is actually the price, coming in at $649, making it one of the most accessible flagship tier devices in the US market right now and even across Europe and Asian markets as well. Now that base model comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, which is pretty par for the course with flagship tier devices in 2022. But if you have an extra $100, for $749, you can double the storage and the RAM as well. This phone here that they sent me to review has 16 gigabytes of RAM as we inside, which honestly is a beast when it comes to multitasking. If you're simply using regular social media apps like Instagram, Facebook, or browsing the web in Chrome, or making phone calls, sending text messages, opening Telegram, you can keep over 30 apps in storage at a time. But if you mix things up and add some games into the mix, that number is greatly reduced, but you're still able to have Genshin Impact and Call of Duty Mobile open and running pretty much at the same time and switch between them on the fly, which is something not a lot of devices are capable of doing. But in all honesty, that's exactly what the smartphone is made for. OnePlus isn't gonna say this officially, but the 10T is the first gaming smartphone in their lineup. It's running the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is probably the most powerful chipset on the market right now when it comes to Android devices, which gives it about a 30% boost in CPU and GPU performance when compared to the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 that's in the 10 Pro, which means if you're into gaming, this is the smartphone to buy. Of course, we do need to talk a little bit about the design of the 10T because there's a little bit of controversy to touch on, which we're going to get to in a second. But as far as the overall look and feel of the phone, it does look pretty familiar. And that's because it shares most of the same design characteristics as the 10 Pro with this large camera module on the back, which honestly I think is one of the best looking camera modules on the market right now for a flagship tier device. The phone does feature an aluminum frame around the edges and a glass back panel that has a soft textured feeling that honestly does a really good job of keeping fingerprints away from the back. But one of the things that most people are complaining about is the fact that this phone no longer has a notification slider along the edge of the device, which is a signature feature that we've seen on OnePlus devices since the very beginning. Now I know a lot of people really love that feature, but personally, it's not a deal breaker for me. I'm someone who turns my phone into silent and just leaves it like that 24 seven. So it's not something that I'm gonna miss on this device. Now OnePlus says that they removed it in order to make more room internally for the 360 degree antenna system that this phone has, which honestly I have to say is a huge improvement over the 10 Pro, even while you're holding the phone in landscape and portrait mode while gaming with your fingers on the edges, you still have incredible performance there. Now the official word from OnePlus is that the internal space that was used for the notification slider was needed to add an extra charging pump for the two cell battery because because this phone does offer a 150 watt charging, something that is a first for OnePlus and needed some modifications to the internal components in order to make that fit. Now, the other two design differences that you need to take note of is the fact that the OnePlus 10T doesn't have a curved display. OnePlus is using a flat display panel on this device, which honestly for me is a step in the right direction. I'm not a huge fan of curved display since they make it harder for typing and add unnecessary glare when you're holding the phone in landscape and portrait mode if you're next to a window. But then also you do need to note, this phone here only has an IP54 rating, which means it is splash resistant and rain resistant, but you're not gonna be able to dip this in water and know that your phone is gonna be secure. If you do need that feature, the 10 Pro has an IP68 rating, which makes it much more tolerant for getting wet. 
Now, before we move on, we do need to talk a little bit more about that display. It's a 6.7 inch OLED panel with a 120 hertz refresh rate and 10 bit color depth, and honestly, looks really good. Though that refresh rate isn't the same as the LTPO display that we saw on the 10 Pro. It is adaptive, but it goes down to 90 hertz and 60 hertz and doesn't reduce from there, which means it doesn't give you those battery benefits if you're looking at static content on your display. But I have to say, the panel is really good, and with 950 nits of peak brightness, it's definitely usable in direct sunlight. When looking at the back of the phone, you might make the assumption that the 10T and the 10 Pro share the same camera system, but that's far from the reality here. It does use a Sony IMX766, a 50 megapixel sensor for its main camera with optical image stabilization, and that camera performs incredibly well in uh, daylight shots and low light shots as well, and can capture some really stunning 4K video. But for the ultra wide camera, things have been downgraded here. It's now using an eight megapixel sensor that's not even capable of capturing 4K video. With the ultra wide, you're limited to just 1080p. And then that third camera is honestly a throwaway camera, two megapixel macro camera that we've been asking manufacturers to stop using for a long time. Hopefully it's something we're not gonna see on the next generation of this device because honestly, it's completely useless. As for the selfie camera, we get a 16 megapixel sensor up front, and this does a pretty good job when capturing selfies in daylight and low light situations, though it's definitely not quite as good as what we got on the OnePlus 10 Pro. If you are looking at these two devices side by side and deciding which smartphone you should buy, the 10 Pro or the 10T, if you're looking for better photos and videos, the 10 Pro is definitely the way to go. When it comes to the software experience on this device, it's pretty standard for a OnePlus device. It's running on Android 12 right out of the box with Oxygen OS 12 as well, similar to what you get on the OnePlus 10 Pro and any other Android device from OnePlus that's been upgraded to Android 12 already. One newer software feature that OnePlus is really trying to push is the new shelf, which you can access by swiping down on the right hand side of the screen, giving you a customizable area within the operating system to add your own widgets, icons, and other features from the phone itself. Now, if you're, this is something that you love, it's definitely there for you. But personally, I disabled it after just a few hours because when I swipe down from the top of the screen, I want to get my notification shade and not this shelf. But as far as everything else goes, the user experience here is pretty simple and clean with a lot of customization options that honestly aren't overbearing as what you find on Samsung's One UI. I honestly love the software experience that you get on these devices compared to what some of the competitors are putting out. It's simple, clean, and definitely very usable. To close things out, let's talk about the battery life and charging on the OnePlus 10T. The phone is equipped with a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, which is definitely more than enough to get you through a full day, even if you are spending an hour or two gaming on this smartphone. And using this device for the past week or so, the phones typically lasted until 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, my usual bedtime, with a 25 to 30% charge after using it heavily throughout the day, going out taking photos and videos, testing out the performance, and a whole lot more. If you are a light user, you can definitely try to stretch this out to a day and a half, but honestly, I would recommend just going to that 24 hour mark with the new quick charging capabilities of this device, being able to charge the smartphone up to 150 watts and deliver a full charge as they claim in about 20 minutes. Now in my testing, it was a little bit slower, getting from zero to 100% in 31 minutes. And that's because here in the US, the charging brick actually limits itself to 125 watt charging versus the 150 watt charging that you can get over in Europe and Asian markets as well. And the charging brick itself is actually 160 watts. I have to say, those charging speeds are pretty incredible. We actually tested it out here in New York as we were going out to take photos and videos with this device. Someone had to go back to the room and charge up their phone because it had just died. And in 10 minutes, it delivered roughly a 50% charge to the OnePlus 10T, which we were then able to use and go out for hours on end taking photos and videos with the smartphone. The only downside here though, is that OnePlus didn't give this phone wireless charging, something that's right now only reserved for their Pro Series devices. I honestly think for $650, they could have definitely fitted in with that price, but they've decided to skip that. So if wireless charging is important to you, the OnePlus 10 Pro is definitely the better option. 
Well, the OnePlus 10T does have its fair share of flaws. I have to say for the price point, $650, it's really hard to go wrong when picking up this device. There are a handful of other devices that you can buy at this price category, but nothing that's gonna give you the same amount of performance that you can get with the OnePlus 10T. My only gripe would be with the cameras themselves if you're looking for something that takes better photos. A Pixel 6 series might be a better option for you. But if you're simply looking for a well-rounded device, something that can take good pictures and daylight and low light shots from its main camera, have some good selfies mixed in there as well, and also deliver incredible performance when it comes to gaming and multitasking, the OnePlus 10 Pro is definitely the option to pick. Let me know what you guys think of this device in the comments below and whether or not you're gonna be spending your hard earned cash on this device when it comes out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.